Nice. 69 days hardcore Minecraft. Let's go. Hey, look at that. I spawned by the ocean. These 69 days are already wet. In these 69 days, I'm going to be playing on a fresh new vanilla Minecraft world for the purpose of shattering my previous records and entertaining you along the way. I've also never played on the 1.17 update, and this is going to be my first experience with it. I haven't played on a fresh new vanilla world and recorded it for well over two years, so call this a pseudo speed run. I'm going to kill the ender dragon, the wither, everything. But first, I have to find some new land. Good thing I spawned near the ocean. Hey, look, some new New land, and because I have weapons, I was here first. Hey, hey, hey. This first village wasn't that great, but I got some food so I can keep on traveling. I also got some iron. I used to feel bad about using this method, but I've changed for the worse. It was a large town, probably could have settled down here, but I don't like being so close to the tundra. Well, anyway, it was a great day one, even though it's technically day zero, but we're not gonna talk about that. Started day two by getting some surface coal, I just couldn't pass it up. Then I went back on the ocean looking for a better town and found this lone villager house. Cute. Oh, I guess there were more houses is sort of tucked away, but the whole thing generated very weird. I was never gonna set up shop here. I'm not a fan of the spruce towns or their dirty spruce children. Well, pretty close to that town, I found an even better one with ocean access and dark wood. Oh, you need to find a good town. Minecraft isn't about mining anymore. It's about exploiting the weak. Speaking of, got some more iron. I'll do anything to avoid a little mining. I could have made my own bed to sleep, but part of me likes stealing it from the villager. It's a great town I just found, but I'm gonna check the surrounding area for more stuff. If I found two towns, that'd be something. I found a ruined nether portal for fairly close by. It's not amazing, but it's promising. I can't really do anything with it because I only have stone tools, but at least I know where some obsidian is. I didn't find much else, went back to town, and then fell in a cave, so I figured I'd go mining. I needed iron, and like I said on day one, I haven't played on this new update, so even mining might be a little fun for me. It's new. Not really sure what I'm gonna use this copper for, but might as well mine some of that too. I'm not sure if this is true, but it definitely felt like iron was more plentiful. I got a ton in this cave alone. Oh yeah, I got full iron armor plus a bunch left over, and for day three, that's pretty fantastic. Ooh, and even better, a big pool of lava. I'm going to the nether. Who needs a house? I'm sleeping in this cave. All right, gonna build a portal on day four. Hopefully I don't look like an idiot. I did it. I was careful. Without a diamond pick, I can't afford a mistake. Okay, crimson forest. That's not terrible. There wasn't much gold, but I did find quartz and I can definitely use that. The nether pigs are also a really great food source if you know how to deal with them, which I do. I've mastered every dimension. Yeah, I would have been nice to find more loot, but what I really need is storage. I mean, look at that. It's disgusting. I wasn't gonna give up on the nether so easily, made my way to the ruined nether portal. But I uh, didn't bring enough lava because I'm really good at this game. After a short trip back to town, I went into the nether and this spot doesn't look that much better. Then I did some bridging, which is dangerous but it's only day five. If I die here, I lose like an hour. And I won't die. I'm pretty good in the nether. Survived there for a hundred days with nothing. To be honest, the nether isn't really that hard to survive in as long as you know the laws and are careful. Both of which I do. And I use trusted strategies when I'm down in the nether, like tunneling. It always works. I stayed in the nether all of day six as well. I just couldn't pass up all of this free gold. Oh, and thanks to tunneling, I also found a fortress. That's pretty nice. On day six, well, I guess good speedrunners can find these things in a matter of minutes, but for me, this was a record. Found a blaze spawner and went right to work killing them. The speedrunners make it look easy because they play on easy, but I'm on hard. Eh, that just means I had to take my time slowly killing blazes, but I'm already here on day six, so for me, this is lightning speed. Still definitely almost died, got all the way down to half a heart. Yeah, playing a little risky. Like I said earlier, I'd only lose like an hour. I was running low on food and had a good amount of blaze rods, so I took this as an opportunity to leave. Now I'm gonna try to get a cleric to sell me ender pearls so I can beat the game. But this first one was a dud. Not every cleric will sell you ender pearls. Oh, he got what he deserved. I don't care if it messes with my trades. It would have been nice for that to work straight up, but this is a pretty bustling town, so I can just grab another. Instead of getting more gold, I decided to go to the nearby swamp and grab some clay. That stuff's pretty profitable, too. Started upgrading him, but ran out of money pretty quickly. It's only day seven, and I still have stone tools. Ah, these guys must have heard I was filming for 69 days. <laughs> nice. Well, this is a little awkward, but I wasn't recording for the first part of day eight, and that second cleric was a dud. I didn't kill him. I wanted to, but I didn't. So today I spent some time working on other money-making methods. You need a diverse portfolio. And hopefully if I can sell enough sand sticks, clay, and zombie flesh, I'll get myself some pearls. Thanks to the dark oak forest nearby, I think sticks are probably going to be the most profitable. There's just so much wood. A lot of speedrunners use sticks too. It's a very good method early on. Philosophically, every player is a speedrunner. 
We're all just going at different paces. I don't even know why I tried to do anything else for money. This is easily the best method. So I spent the rest of the day chopping, thinking about what I'll do to that third cleric if he doesn't sell me pearls. Fletcher escaped day 10, but I got him back in by shoving. Got this cleric in a dirt hole, and after some trading, he'll sell me ender pearls. Hooray, he gets to live. I'm gonna need to do more work before I can take on the dragon. More pearls, better gear, that sort of thing, but at least I know where to go. I don't want to go absolutely full kit to the dragon fight, but I'd like to have at least some diamonds diamonds and enchanted gear. And that's gonna take a little bit, but hopefully not too long. I'm good at this game now. I also don't want to die. I'm getting quite attached to this town, despite murdering quite a few of them. So now all of my focus is on fighting the Ender Dragon. I'm gonna try to fight it as soon as I feel comfortable. Though if all of my focus is on the Ender Dragon, not sure why I mined this copper. Copper's useless. I'm also not sure what compelled me to go through the Dark Oak Forest, but I hadn't gone that way yet and figured today was a good day. It was dense, but not that expansive. Only took about a minute to get all the way through. Oh, and I'm real glad I went on the other side. I found myself a town. This is huge. It's pretty hilly, but there's a lot of people, and it's got new ocean access, so I'll take it. Oh, and there's sheep. There's none of those at the old town. I'm a farm them. I'm gonna turn these sheep into diamonds. Just you wait. Actually, you don't have to wait. I'm not sleeping anymore, so I kept working and got the first sheep in my new sheep farm. I was wondering why it wasn't working, though, and it's because the observer was backwards. I'm so amazing. I've made tons of sheep farms like this in the past. It's just a very easy way to make some automatic emeralds with not a lot of material. Then I took a break from farming to check out the ocean. Three towns would be something. Nah, technically this is an ocean, but it's really more like a giant lake. I didn't really go very far and found nothing. That's fine, there's still a lot to do at this town, and honestly, three towns would probably be too much for me. But if I really want to start cranking out that sheep farm, I need gold, so it's back to the nether. I really shouldn't have used the first portal I made. It drops off to a pretty bad section of nether. I just got attacked by pigs, mostly. Now, that other portal drops me off pretty high up, but it's right next to some nether wastes, and those are pretty good for gold. I don't need much, but I'm gonna mine what I can while I'm down here. Oh, and in the meantime, I got the achievement for bopping a gas with its own attack. I'm pretty good at it these days. Got another fortress, too. Don't really need it, but might as well check it out. It was pretty in the open, and I got scared. I still have iron armor and didn't want to die, but I was way more scared when I had to go back through the dark forest at night. There's a good chance I'd die here. Didn't die. That's good, but not for the sheep. Now I've got two sheep and enough gold to make a collection system, but I just realized I need iron. It's never gonna end. Well, it'll end for the golems. Then I got the rest of the iron through good honest manual labor. While my iron was cooking, I put myself in a hole. I could have mined more, but I really had to poo. You know, I drink a lot of black coffee, which is pretty good for you and keeps me up for all of these Minecraft days I have to play but it does wreak havoc on my colon. I guess I could use this time to tell you to go buy my t-shirts again. Do it! The sun's just about to come up, so it's basically day 15, and I started by making a nice lit path through the forest. It's nothing special, but it is straight and lit, which will make me feel a lot better about running through. And once that was done, I got back to increasing my number of employees. It didn't take long before I had a functioning collection system, and then I started putting in as many sheep as I could. Some horses got in the way, and I wanted to show this because I know it makes the horse people mad. I got five sheep in the farm today, and I'm shooting for ten. Unfortunately, now my sheep number is the only thing holding me back from making making this farm bigger, but they'll breed. Now in the meantime, I gotta work on the villagers. I gotta sell this wool to someone. I also want these villagers to be infected and then cured, and instead of building a whole new system, I'm gonna try to convert the already standing huts. It's a fairly simple concept, but I've never actually done it before, and I was certain that something would go wrong. But I'm gonna try not to worry about that too much. Tonight I'm killing phantoms. I need their juicy meat. I've hardly lit up any of this town, so there were monsters absolutely everywhere. It made killing phantoms so difficult. No phantom meat tonight. Plenty of pig meat, though. In the light of day 17, I got everything ready for infecting and then curing my first villagers. I have no nether wart, but you don't need it for potions of weakness. That's nice. Then night came, and I got a zombie. While simple, my contraption worked flawlessly. I was able to get the zombie into the hut. Though the villagers started hiding on my ladder, and when I tried to push him down, he escaped. Ugh. Why run? You know I'm just gonna catch ya. Alright, got him back in. He can't climb the ladder. We should be good. Villager infected and cured. Here comes that money. Filling up the hole from a creeper on day 18 when I heard the burning of a zombie villager. Wait a minute. I have no idea why it was on fire. I totally panicked. I should have grabbed some water. It was right there. I left the trap door open. That was very smart of me. Please, please don't die. Ah. I was very upset. You know, if I'm gonna look on the bright side, it was only one cure. I didn't waste too much time. And that night, I was able to get another. It's a new system. There's gonna be some flaws. So, I, I just don't know how to tell you this. I wasn't recording, 
and lost another. You know, I went with a new system to save time, but only ended up wasting time. I'm almost certain the issue is the trap door. It was closed this time, but just to be sure, I'm gonna put a block on it. I'm gonna set it all up again, but I can't even cure another villager. I wasted all my gold. So it looks like I'm going back to the nether, though I probably would have had to anyway. Then I mined just way too much gold. As an old Minecraft player, sometimes this feels a little cheap. Back in my day, we had to mine gold in a mine shaft. Uh, between you and me, I'm making an old school Minecraft 100 days, and I think you'll really like it. Just don't tell anybody. After prepping all of day 20, I think I can finally do this. At least I hope so. Yeah, it all worked good. Probably should have ironed out those details before making a video, though. Just to be sure, after curing this villager, I put some water in his hut, so even if he does light on fire, he should extinguish. The future is bright, even though that took a little longer than I thought. Welcome to the company, Toolsmith. There are no benefits. And if you get in the hole quickly, there'll be no corporal punishment. I'm gonna get diamond tools from this guy because mining is lame, but starting a small business, that's fun. Speaking of business, the shepherd infecting seems to be going great now, just had to mess it up twice. It was just about to be daytime when I got in that third cure. He should be perfect. And now I can sell white and black wool for one emerald each. That's some easy money. And I'm gonna need it, because if you want diamond tools from a toolsmith, it's a pretty pricey investment. So I went to the first town and made an armor and started leveling them up. Those are a little bit cheaper. And at night I started working on curing another shepherd. I should be able to do this properly. I'm not gonna make a dedicated video on this method, because it's super simple, and I guarantee any one of you could make something better. But it works. Got the zombie in and that villager is about to get diddled. I waited for the infection in Shepherd 1's house. I didn't want the zombie to despawn. Day 23, I got in that third cure and took out the zombie. Now I should have two perfect shepherds. Oh yeah, with all this money, give me a few more days. I'll be fighting that ender dragon. However, with all the wool demand, now I'm gonna need more sheep. So I started expanding today. I need to change almost everything. Oh, it's very ugly, but I don't care. Remember, this is a speed run. Working all night, I got enough space for 10 sheep and that should be more than enough. Day 24, I dismantled my ugly villager infection devices. This was kind of the reason I made them in the first place. The hut stays original for the most part, and the villager never has to move very far. I think all in all, even though there were some hiccups, it was a pretty good system. Um, how, how did you even get in here. I didn't expect a villager to let himself in through two pressure plates, but I guess that's a possibility. Whatever, it's over, it worked, and I think I can use that other villager for something. But I'm still mostly focused on getting better gear. It's day 24 and I still have stone tools. But I know exactly what I'm gonna use that second villager for. He's gonna sell me some shears. The sheep farm runs off shears, and it's very nice to not have to use my iron. Speaking of iron, I got an iron pickaxe that's enchanted. Not very well, but it's my first piece of enchanted gear. That's a milestone. And I'm working towards another milestone and still need those 10 sheep. On Honestly, that'll be more than enough. I got up to eight today, and that's basically already unlimited emeralds. Day 26, I had my first chance to buy myself some diamond gear. An axe, but I'll take it. I broke it in on some horses. It's okay, the horse people left the first time I killed one. Hey, armorer, I'm back to buy your goods and then throw them directly on the ground. Also got myself a flame bow from the Fletcher. Unlimited money is nice. You know what else is nice? My easy little forest road. It's just some torches, but it's peace of mind. Wow, big day. Just like that, I got 10 sheep in the sheep farm. That's a good profit. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention I'm no longer homeless. Check this out. It's got a door, so it's home. It's a big day after a big day. I can now buy diamond pickaxes. First thing I did with it was grab some obsidian. I've got 50 levels and definitely need to do some enchanting. But you know how grabbing obsidian is. I'm basically gonna be here all day. Made another portal with my new obsidian day 28 and... Oh, yeah, that's... Well, this is bad. Even after a short bit of tunneling, I'm just back at that crimson forest. Kind of a pointless decision. Well, I have been meaning to explore this cave underneath the sheep. Might as well do that today. You know, it's the caves and cliffs update. Might as well do some caves and cliffs. I should have just came down here when I needed that iron. Those golems didn't have to die. Iron right next to coal. I just wish I had fortune. The caves didn't really seem any more magnificent than they normally are. Maybe I'm just not going deep enough. Anyway, I got a lot of stuff, but had to surface because my food was pretty bad. I didn't want to die down there. There. Fixed the food situation immediately. I'm gonna be eating golden carrots from here on out. I also got a weaponsmith inside of my sheep pen, and hopefully by tomorrow he'll sell me a diamond sword. Yep, there it is. Within one day, I got myself a diamond sword. That is cool. All from wool, I might add. Not once did I have to go strip mining, and I kind of hate strip mining. And to make things even more notable, I'm gonna get a full set of diamond armor as well. I'm missing a shovel, sure, but full diamonds and tools on day 30? Well, that's a record for me. Add golden carrots and a fresh new shield. I'm gonna be unstoppable in the mine 
diamonds tomorrow. So day 31, I went into the mine knowing I'd be fine. I didn't mine for any of these diamonds, but I have to if I want an enchanting table. That's why I'm down here. Found myself some diamonds in a mine shaft chest, and this creeper congratulated me. Well, at least the diamond was fine, but I need another, and I don't care how many families I have to kill to get it. Got the second, and then that was it. I guess I'm not too lucky with the diamonds today. Hey, look at that. Diamonds on day 32. And no one will know I put them there in creative between days. <laughs> for legal reasons, that's a joke. Save the golems, mine the rails. I already had enough diamonds, but the mine shaft was pretty cool. Some of the new stuff was starting to spawn. And about a stack of zombies, but I've got diamonds. They weren't much. And after getting eight diamonds and pretty much everything I could ever want, I tunneled my way back to the surface. Then I ran around to the different villages, making money and spending money. And I spent pretty much every emerald that I have, but now I can make a maxed out enchanting room. With all my levels, I made some really awesome gear. I should be able to handle a nether fortress. Even got myself a sword with sharpness five. Stay away from me. I was gonna go to the nether on day 34. Even made myself a nice new bow. But then a villager got sick. This is what I get for keeping them in the sheep pen. Just stay six feet apart. You're outside. You probably won't get infected. I see how the zombie got in. It was my poor fence design. Like I said, I was gonna go to the nether, but now I have to stay home and give the kids their medicine. And you know, now that I think about it, I don't really need all these sheep, do I? By the end of the day, I got the sheep thinned and the villagers out, and it took all day because they don't listen! Alright, I know I'm pretty strong, but before I go deep in the nether exploring, I need a fire potion, and I can get it from piglins. But after exhausting all my gold, I didn't get a fire potion, so I just nutted up and went in. I didn't find any nether wart, but I found more gold still. That lava it just makes me nervous. At least I finally got one by the end of the day that's gonna make me feel a lot better. Remember, there's two nether fortresses, and this is the first one I found. I didn't really go through the whole thing, just got blazes. It turned out to be incredibly large and had nether wart. That's awesome. Oh, it had everything. Saddles, diamond horse armor, you name it. I even felt safe running back home on this thin block bridge. I've got that fire potion. If you're wondering when I'm gonna fight the ender dragon, the answer is tomorrow. I just gotta make a few things first. You know, maybe I'm going a little slower than I could have. I probably could have fought the ender dragon around day 30, but I wanted everything. The video isn't about killing the dragon as fast as possible. It's about doing as much as possible in 69 days, and the dragon is just one of those things. And now I I think I have everything. I've done it before. I should be okay. Well, if you want to find the dragon, the first step is travel, and that's what I'm doing on day 38. Alone with my thoughts, thinking about if anyone would even care to watch me survive for 69 days. I guess we'll see. All right, now it's under me. Just gotta do some digging. I got lucky, dug right to the portal room. I brought literally just enough ender pearls that would have been embarrassing going back home. While I'm down here, figured I'd loot. If the dragon kills me, this is my last day alive, so I better make it a good one. Also, if I kill the dragon, I teleport home, and getting back here is a pain, so I figured I'd loot now. I didn't get anything, really, but I already kind of have everything. D -d 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 dragon time! And this is definitely the fastest I've ever gotten the portal. Thought I was falling for a brief moment, but I was not. I didn't bring a pumpkin. I know it's safer. It just looks bad. I'm making a video here. And you know, you kill the dragon a few times. It's really not that bad, especially if you're dressed up like me with slow-falling potions and diamond armor. I was still very careful, took my time with it. I still don't use the bed method, because I feel like I'm gonna blow myself up. And within a few minutes, I had killed the dragon. Take that, Minecraft. You're an easy game. I was really hoping I'd get to level 69, but didn't. Ugh. 13 hours. That's my new personal best. Beat that. Oh no, the day is not over. There is much more to do. I'm gonna get me an elytra while I'm here. Like I said, if I go through the main portal, I'll get teleported back home. The end gateway was very kind. It put me right next to a big end city with an end ship. Ladies and gentlemen, I've conquered the end with literally nothing, so when I have all this gear, it's pretty easy for me. So yeah, it was an absolute massacre today at the end city, and I left with all the loot. 50,000 shulkers used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. I was there so long it bled into day 40, but I wanted to make sure I got everything. I was mostly looking for some mending stuff, but didn't find any. Whatever, at least going back home will be easy. I can fly now. Home sweet home. Now it's time to fight the wither. Well, first I gotta do a couple things. My storage needs a ton of work. Yeah, everything I own is in two chests, and it definitely shows. There was also a villager in the sheep farm. Don't know how that happened, but he's staying in there. And then I got myself up to level 69. I had to do some enchanting and at least wanted it once. If I fly an elytra without mending and unbreaking three, I'll lose my mind, so this is a high priority. I tried my best to get mending, or looting three, I need that for getting wither skulls, but didn't get either today. But I got a mending library in pretty early day 42. It was expensive because I hit him several times. And now I'm following this guy around trying to get looting three. I don't want to kill wither skeletons without it. Got it! This villager knows what's good for him. So then I burned all of my dragon levels, making really awesome gear. It was a fun day. I stayed up all night killing creepers with looting three. You can get quite a lot of gunpowder. I wanted to fly over the 
forest, day 43, and I got my wish. But after flying all the way to the portal, I realized I forgot my golden helmet. I didn't even mind. It was kind of fun flying for the first time. All right, now we're in the nether fortress. Let's get these skulls. And on my second skeleton, I got my first. And the very next skeleton I killed dropped the second. I swear I'm not cheating. I also shot this skeleton from 50 meters away for the sniper duel achievement. And just like that, very early on day 44, I got my third skull. I couldn't believe it. I'm sure someone out there can do the math. I only killed 15 wither skeletons with looting three and got three skulls. How lucky is that? It felt very lucky, but that's good. I really don't like showing footage of wither skeleton farming. It's just boring. You know, it kind of feels like I'm rushing into this, but I don't really have any excuse to not fight the wither tomorrow. So I got ready today. Oh, and I got a horse. He's nice. Well, Ben, this could be our last night together, but the viewers know there's more time in the video, so it's not. All right, now it's time to find me a spot to fight the wither, preferably with a lot of bystanders. I love me some wither roses. Yeah, this looks like a good place. Hello, goats. I needed milk and had no idea that goats made it, but you know, that makes sense. Then I spawned the wither. I was fairly confident in myself. Like the dragon, I've done this a few times. The bystander strategy works perfectly and immediately focused the sheep and the pigs. There's a definite technique to fighting it alone in the open. It's pretty much just run and gun. And then once it becomes a melee fight, just get in there and kill it before it kills you. So now I got myself a beacon plus six wither roses. That's a pretty good day. No rockets to get home though. Dirt works just as well. What now, you may ask? Oh, you'll find out tomorrow. Dug my way to the bottom of the nether. I'm going hunting for netherite. Oh, I love fire potions. Swimming in lava, that's a vibe. I'm gonna be using the bed method, which I had never done before. Don't worry, I practiced in creative. Gotta say, it was a pretty good sign that I immediately got three ancient debris. You know, the bed method always scared me as a hardcore player, but honestly, it's the way to go, especially if you're like me and have an automatic sheep farm. In my 2000 days world, I used TNT, which definitely works, but this is so much cheaper. They're beds. It's just one of the main comments that I get on my 2000 days world is why didn't you use beds? And yeah, I was dumb for not. I got eight ancient debris today, and that's pretty good for only using beds. Right back at it, day 47, and I'm getting gold too. I have a silk touch pickaxe, so it's the most efficient. Definitely top five parts of the nether update is the fact that there's so much gold in the nether now. I'm just now realizing though that this is the caves and cliffs update, and really I haven't done much caves or cliffs. Don't worry, I'll go to the deep caves. I'll be real strong with all this netherite. Got up to 17 to breast today. I'll probably only stay down here for another day. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to say. Day 48 was just another day of netherite mining. It went fine. Cooked it all in the nether. I was just excited and there's lava down here for fuel. I got six bars. They're going for 10 each. Hit me up. I could have stayed down there getting more, but I need to build a home. I'm still pretty much homeless. First things first though, made myself some netherite gear. Just the perfect stuff like sharpness. My boots ain't great and my helmet's pretty bad, but I have some time. I can make better ones. And I think I found a nice spot for my new house on this peninsula. I'll be honest, it's nice building a house and clearing land when you can bend the very earth to your will. I've decided I'm going to use concrete, which I've never actually made in a survival world before. And yeah, it's because concrete's weird. You have to literally pour water on it. Oh, and there's definitely a much more efficient way to do this, and I know they're gonna roast me in the comments for doing what I'm doing. After struggling with the concrete, I dug out a new hole for myself, and as you can tell by the tridents, I got attacked several times. It's not a massive home. It's gonna live in a village. I don't want it to be too big. And yeah, probably don't want it looking evil. I'm gonna go with the villager aesthetic. But you know, like an upgraded villager aesthetic. Instead of cobblestone, it's smooth stone bricks. Now that, of course, is just the facade. The inside will feature concrete and colored walls. I didn't do much structure today. Day, mostly just worked on the colors and I think I'm getting there. White trim and blue walls is a little bachelor, but you know, I don't have much dye. I'm working with what I got. You might also notice that this wall has a little cavity. That's gonna be my redstone wall, because of course I gotta put redstone in the house. You know, I'm getting there. Definitely have come a long way from a giant oak tower. I know I just got done putting the walls up, but now it's already time to tear them down. I thought the door would be better closer to the redstone wall, so when you walk in the door, you can turn on the lights. And I wired up the lights tonight, though that's pretty much all I'm doing with redstone in this house. It's not that big. Oh, it's very unnecessary necessary to have a light switch in Minecraft. Maybe even unsafe, but I wanted one. With that done, I'm working on the second floor and the staircase design gave me some trouble. You can kind of see here I wanted basement steps and second floor steps right next to each other and it was tough to make it fit. After some tinkering, I got both working. They fit nicely and I don't bump my head. And yeah, getting the second floor to fit above the redstone was tough, but I did say these lights are impractical. And tonight was the first night that I slept in my new home, even though there's no roof. I had to wait for some stone to cook day 53, so I tried to get myself a good helmet and got a pretty nice one. Trust 
trust me, I'll have full netherite armor before the end of this video, but I didn't want to waste my bars on bad armor. Today, I will be roofing, and 10 out of 10 stole this design from the villagers. Listen, if they didn't want people stealing their stuff without credit, they should have trademarked it. They created it, so they have a right to. Anyway, this is the best roof that I've ever made ever. There's no way I could have done any of this on my own. Stealing ideas is the way. Purple concrete walls in the bedroom, because I don't have too much dye and didn't want to do blue again. I can't get over how weird using concrete feels. I've never done it before, and putting water on my walls just feels off. The redstone wall really messed with the symmetry of the house, but honestly, I could care less. I like my lights. It's really starting to come together, though, when it blends in well, which I really like. Day 56, I finished up the facade, just had to cut down a whole forest for it. And then after finishing up the bedroom, I paused the recording to take a nasty poo. But then I forgot to unpause, so now I have a finished basement. Oh well, it wasn't that interesting of construction. Today, I'll be making an actual storage room. I've been living out of two chests, and it's awful. It didn't take that long for me to get down a basic design to match the rest of the basement. So for the remainder of the day, I just sorted all of my junk. There's quite a lot of it. But you know, at the end of the day, having all my items in these chests felt super nice. My inventory's never been this clean. Woke up day 58 and made myself an enchanting table. The one I use now is inside of a cave. Then I went to go get some levels and found that two of my shepherd friends were dead. I didn't build a wall in this town to save time. And I knew, I knew it would come back to bite me. I still have the first shepherd I ever made, which is fine. He'll work for the rest of the video. It's almost over. Well, at least I have a fresh new wall, day 59. It's small, but it's a wall. But despite my walls being about keeping things out, I like to be able to jump over them because I don't always like going through the fence gate. So I made a beacon with jump boost, buried it in the ground, and turned the light blue. I think now it's home. After all that house building, I felt it was time for an adventure. I haven't done much exploring, especially by flight, so there's a lot of things I'm looking for, but one thing in particular. I'd really like a totem of undying, even though the video's almost over. I haven't had one this entire time, and even with netherite armor, I feel vulnerable. For a totem, I need a raid. And for a raid, I need an outpost, and I just found one. They had caged golems outside. I've never seen this before, it must be new. Anyway, I tried my best to get bad omen, but couldn't get it tonight. Spawn rates are always better in the daytime, I should have no problem now. Took a little longer than I thought, but eventually I found a banner boy and beat him to death. Hey, random village that I don't care about, guess who's having a raid? Oh, it's a beautiful, thriving village right next to an ice spikes biome. It's truly a tragedy that I'm doing this. Found one villager and blocked him inside of his house. I literally can't lose now, though a lot of his family will die. Well, I could lose the raid if I die, but I don't. And you know this because it's day 61. Sorry to break the magic. As the raid moved on, I just shot them all from the top of a house that seemed to work very well. Got my totem, mission accomplished. Pretty much every villager died, but that's what they get for not building walls. Beat the raid, got five totems, and it only cost an entire society. I'm a hero. Made it back home by the morning of day 62, and if you can believe it, I have more adventure planned. But today, I'm just prepping and fixing my armor. Don't want to die when I'm so close to 69. I went over to town one and found that no one was there. And I found some doors that were blast off the hinges. Uh, well, I guess this is what I get for not building walls. Truth is, I cared nothing for this town. I'm really not surprised that something like this happened. Got full netherite, made the sting of losing those villagers a little bit better. I'm prepped for tomorrow and wanted a good night's sleep, but can't because I constructed my house poorly. Well, that just means I gotta sleep with the villagers. Gross. Day 63, I'm going spelunking. I've said it a few times in this video video, but I haven't done much caves or cliffs, and I probably should. And, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just not lucky, but to me, the cave seemed pretty much the same. Got diamonds, though, so I can't really complain. I did run into several ravines. Not really caves, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. I will have you know I'm looking for something in particular. I'm not just running into the darkness like a madman. And I found it. It's subtle. I really had to look for this. I found an amethyst geode. I have no idea how rare they are, but I only found this one, so probably fairly. Not only is it pretty but it's used for a couple things in the Caves and Cliffs update, so I'm here to farm it. Technically, you're not supposed to break every piece, but I didn't know that and just broke them all. It just has such a nice sound when you break it, I couldn't help myself. I only found one, but that's pretty much all you need. I got quite a lot of amethyst from this. I didn't go straight back to the surface. I wanted to see if I could find another. No, but I got so much other stuff. It was such a great outing. You know, there's a point in every Minecraft world where you stop using a massive mixed-matched rare chest because you got too rich, and for me, that was today. The thing I wanted to check out most with the amethyst was this spyglass. I was peeping on villagers, really enjoying this new spyglass, when a creeper creeped up on me. I was okay, but my land... No. Took all day to repair because I use about 17 different blocks in the construction. Maybe a cobblestone house ain't too bad. To talk more about the spyglass though, it's a really nice addition. You know, it's just kind of fun. Maybe copper isn't so useless. To stay with the theme of doing new stuff, I'm working on a new project today. I'm gonna make an axolotl cage because that's super original. I gotta say, I am proud of my use of texture and color in the sand floor. Three different types there. I really wasn't sure what to do with the walls. I just kept them boring smooth stone. Yeah, it's an axolotl cage. Pretty 
standard. It's got some features though. I wasn't sure if he was gonna despawn in there, so I named him. Nice. Oh, my favorite part is you can feed him with the press of a button. Axolotls are predators and will kill fish in their tank. Place down some greenery and yeah, I'd say that's a pretty notable tank. Only one more day to the big one and I know exactly what I'm building today. No, it's not a dirt sculpture. I'm just making sure my work is flawless. You had to know I was making a monument. A nice one. I decided to use some blocks from the new update, especially since I have no idea what to use this amethyst for. I really hope that's not a gang sign. I'm just trying to make a 69 look cool. After some landscaping and glowstone, this is what I came up with. I'm happy with it. Today was a great day, despite that arrow in my nutsack. Well, I made it. 69 Minecraft days, and I was able to do all of this. If I didn't goof around so much, I probably could have done more, but I'm still proud of myself. 69 days and all of this is pretty nice. This was a one-time deal. I hope you enjoyed it, but if you want to see more 100 days, those are coming. It's always nice watching the sunset after the end of a long video. It's one of the things I think I look forward to most. Oh, and just so you're aware, I'm not doing this series anymore. I will now bury myself alive. Nope, no 420 days, no 690 days. It's over. Took a lot longer than I thought to die. Spent almost two minutes suffocating, but finally did. There's a world download link in the description if you want to check this one out, but yeah, I'm done playing. I survived 69 days, and I'm not going a day more. Thanks for watching. Stay notable. Remember to buy a t-shirt.